flight missions from liftoff through landing, both for normal and for emergency cases were flown electronically. The spacecraft was heavily instrumented to provide pertinent data during the flight. Throughout this period, all the elements of the mission made their preparations. Recovery forces, tracking stations, the Mercury Control Center rehearsed the mission again and again. You and your fellow astronauts rehearsed your parts, went through the procedures over and over. Three days before launch, a go, no go review board evaluated the flight readiness of all the mission elements, spacecraft, launch vehicle, pilots, tracking stations, recovery forces, everything. The decision, go. The recovery forces were dispatched and on their way to their stations downrange. May 1st, 1961. Less than two and a half years from Project Mercury initiation, countdown for a manned flight was in progress. That's a day that you will never forget. MR3 followed a split countdown, about four hours the first day, a little over six hours the second day. This procedure helps reduce personnel fatigue. Hydrogen peroxide fueling. This is used in the spacecraft attitude control system. The first day's countdown was completed with this operation. Very early in the morning, May 2nd, the final countdown is underway. Liquid oxygen for the launch vehicle. Before this operation, a meeting had been held to review the weather situation. The weather was marginal, but the decision, go. At the Mercury Control Center, every detail of the countdown and status of all other elements such as the recovery forces and the tracking stations, was carefully monitored. The Mercury Operations Director manages the entire flight from the center. In the blockhouse, systems checks were completed in the spacecraft. Launch vehicle checks were also completed. The recovery forces were on station in a line along the flight path, ready to retrieve the craft, even if there should be an undershoot or an overshoot. You remember the final physical at Hangar S, the feeling that now, at last, the time was almost at hand. And you remember the feeling of confidence that you had, confidence that all systems were ready and that you were ready too. Before leaving the hangar for the launch pad, you had sensor leads attached to your body. These leads would provide telemeter data on your body functions and reactions during the flight. Mercury flights are designed to provide comprehensive information about man during space flight. Information that can be used by people all over the world in their own research projects. And then it happened. You remember the letdown feeling you got when the Spock box gave the word. Test number 108, MR3, was scrubbed because of weather. A letdown feeling, yes, but it was reassuring to know that the mission would not go unless everything was right. Then it was Friday, May 5th, three days later, and the countdown was proceeding again. You remember the feeling you had that this was the day. There'd be no scrub today. The mission would go. You remember the ride to the pad in the transport van. You had rehearsed the procedure before, taken the ride to the pad and climbed into the spacecraft. But this time, you knew it was the real thing.
feeling of confidence. As astronaut Shepard goes through the pre-launch countdown, he knows the system is as ready as human effort can make it. Doctors in the Mercury Control Center and the blockhouse monitor Shepard's physiological status during the countdown. Astronaut Gordon Cooper, assigned to the blockhouse during the launch operation, stays in direct voice contact with Shepard. As the gantry is pulled back, the emergency vehicle known as the Cherry Picker is raised into position. An armored car is located at the pad. It can operate in any terrain. At the viewing stands about two miles away, hundreds of press, radio, and television representatives stand by to witness the launch. A helicopter stands by to take a doctor anywhere he might be needed. Astronauts Carpenter and Shira take off to make direct aerial observation of the early portion of your flight. An amphibious vehicle is standing by, ready to move out if necessary to make a close-in recovery. The recovery force helicopters are airborne. All elements of the mission have reported ready to the control center, and the launch is go. Roger, ready to resume the uh, count, uh, SPE. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Stoney, uh, verify. Right. Resume the count. Okay, Stoney, take it over. Roger. Five seconds. Seven, Stoney, zero. Uh, seven, loud and clear, Stoney. Uh, 
followed a normal ballistic arc, peaking at about 115 mile altitude. The spacecraft landed 300 miles downrange. The complete flight took 16 minutes and gave Alan Shepard about five minutes of weightlessness. After the spacecraft landed, Shepard and the craft were on the Lake Champlain. Complete and detailed information on the flight and on Alan Shepard was recorded from launch to recovery. Information to be made available to scientists and interested people the world over. Within minutes after the flight, Shepard received a well done from the president on behalf of the people of the United States. A well done accepted by Shepard as a representative of all the people in Project Mercury. Project Mercury, another step in man's search for knowledge. Freedom 7, another step toward man in space.